Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this episode I'm going to be showing you how to wire up the Yishin Wizard as well as the Turner G IA 6C. So basically um, it has a few components, it's got a little connection lead uh, which has a few clips, one's just fallen off actually. Uh, it's also got the battery telemetry cable and the binding cable as well. But before we can do that I'm going to have to take out some of the hardware from the top and get inside. So let me uh, do that now. Okay, so that's the six screws all taken out. And now that is, I'm just gonna unplug the, the little, uh, the VTX cable's quite tight, so I'm just gonna pull that off. Quite tight that little cable, so just be careful you don't damage anything. So that's the VTX cable there, that's the receiver cable. So we've got three wires here. We've got a, a black wire, a red wire, and a white wire. The black wire is the ground, the red is the power, and the white is the signal. If I get the receiver, I can plug that on there. Now there are four pins on this receiver, as you can see. And you can see the ground is the bottom, then the power, then the signal then uh, which is either IBUS or SBUS and at the top there's PPM and um, now we're not going to be using PPM we're going to be using SBUS or IBUS I'm not sure which one the Ishin Wizard has and can run in its UART but basically let's have a little look the flight controller in there um, so that's what we're looking at we could just leave it there However, I would really like to get the battery telemetry set up, which is on this little cable here. So I'm gonna have to remove these two bits here. I could just cut them, which I'm really tempted to do, because even if I pull them out, they're gonna have little clips on the bottom. If you if you ever got these clips, guys, just a quick tip is that you can lift up the little plastic bits. Hopefully the camera can see that. Lift those little plastic bits up and you should be able to slide them out like so. Am I ever going to need them again? No. So I feel like I'm just going to cut these off. I think maybe we should measure once. Oh, loads, loads of space. This cable is actually quite this uh, plastic, not silicon, so it's not particularly flexible. Um, so I'm going to leave a bit more length in there than I need for that reason. So it bends a bit easier. Also, when I am doing any maintenance of any sort, then I can have a little bit more length left. So I've just cut those off, as you can see, and uh, I'll strip them back. Now there is another thing I'd like to do eventually, which is take this receiver, not apart, but take the outer casing off, de-pin it, and then directly solder these cables onto the receiver itself, put a heat shrink over it. Now I haven't done that yet, as you can see, uh, one, I'll leave it for a later video, but two, I haven't got the heat shrink and I'm really, I've still got my old soldering iron. I have ordered another one. It's not here yet, so until that gets here, I don't really want to do too many soldering jobs as I don't feel the one I've got is really up to speed. What we're going to do is we're going to plug this little cable in here. It's really fiddly. The little connector only goes in one way by the way guys. So the red cable is positive, black is negative. Just twisting these cables so I can I'll tin them in this moment. I'm gonna undo these nuts on top of the flight drawer. These are nine on nuts. Okay so that's the flight controller. So these cables are the signal cables. These white ones to the electronic speed controller that then goes to the motors. We've also got red and a black cable here as well, which supplies power to the flight controller from basically the, the PDP. And as you can see, these cables here for the camera, and they're also on the, on the uh, PDB as well. So this is quite a nice little tidy board in here. It's got a fair amount on it. Solder those two pads, that add a little bit of additional solder, and then solder this directly onto it. And that will then give the receiver, the battery voltage. I have got some new solder I've never used before. It's uh, apparently a Polish brand. I'll leave a link in the description below for it. Um, it's one mil, it's got 
I can't remember if this is single core flux or multi core flux, but it's got a low melting temperature as well. I'm hoping it's going to be a bit better than my previous soldering attempts. I'm just going to move this hardware out of my way. So I like to try and work clean and don't want to lose anything. I'm going to use the pliers to hold them for me. Grab my soldering iron. Damage of this soldering iron is old, it's disgustingly dirty, not very well looked after at all. Wow, this is just bone mat and that solder's just melted straight through it. Hmm. Let's see if I can melt it. I mean, that solder is incredible how quickly that. Wow, incredible solder. Never used anything quite so efficient. Ooh, magic smoke as well. Gotta love that. Right, so now we're gonna bring the wizard back into play. I think there's quite a lot of solder already there, so I'm going to switch these on. I'm just having problems with the terribly bad soldering iron that I have. It's not that it's so bad, it's just that I haven't looked after it. That is now soldered in, which I'm really pleased about. Hi guys and welcome back. We've wired in the battery detection and we have added the signal cable. We are going to have to, let me just bring this down. So you can see, we're going to have to change this receiver cable. Now it's normally plugged in on this side over here, which is the PPM side. Okay. And we need to switch it over to the iBus, which is the much faster. Basically it refreshes the signal much quicker than PPM does. As we change throttle and direction signal, it'll be sending that information much, much faster than the PPM. So we're going to plug it into the other side, which effectively is the back of the quad. Okay, so now that's plugged into there. We still, still need to bind this receiver up to the Turner G Evolution, so we'll go ahead and do that now. I'm going to turn it on, but we won't do that quite yet. Here we're going to click on RX Bind. Okay, so it says binding to RX. Just look on here, we should see a flashing light where it says LED. I know it's upside down for you lot. I'm going to plug in now. See how it blinked really quickly. And then it now sodded light. Now if we go back and back again, we should be able to throttle up and nothing should happen. Okay, and the reason for that is guys, is the flight controller is still configured in PPM. So now we have to plug in and go into Beats Flight and also we could upgrade the BL Heli S software as well to get the latest software for the electronic speed controllers. We can upgrade Betaflight as well. I believe it's running on 2.9 and there is now currently 3.1 something. It's up updated all the time. So that's plan is now to plug it in. So I'll see you in the next video where we will be configuring the Ishin Wizard in the BL Heli configurator and the Beats Flight Configurator. Thanks a lot guys, I hope you learned something and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye bye.